Mold in the garage underneath the water heater. Did the water heater cause it? We're about to find out right now. Now my clients just purchased and closed on this house behind me. Now during the home inspection, the home inspector found mold directly underneath that water heater. Now the question becomes what caused that mold? The sellers didn't disclose it. The buyers got credit, which is my client. The clients got two other estimates and this is why I won the job. All right guys, you can see here, here's the water heater. Our uh, master plumber, Raul, is starting to uh, get everything prepped to drain. But look at right here, you can see that there's been no signs of any leaks on top, right? When I look at mold conditions, I look at it at way beyond just the removal. Let me show you what that looks like here. Here's the mold that the, uh, that the home inspector found during the uh, inspection. So there's definitely some stainage there. So when I first got to the job to evaluate, I used a moisture reading device and uh, I got a little bit of moisture in this corner here. Now that's telling me that there is an active, but a very slow leak. So where is it coming from? That's the biggest question. All right, so we're gonna open up the relief valve and get some air. That way we can get a much faster drain of all of this water here. You can see we're utilizing the, uh, the drain here. So we're flowing pretty good. It's probably gonna take a good, I would say 20 minutes at this point. So the first thing you wanna do obviously is shut the power off to the electrical system. And then if there's a recirculating pump, you definitely wanna disconnect that. A lot of people will burn those pumps out by not unplugging it. So those are two little key points that you really need to know when you're draining a water heater. So if the water heater was not the cause of that guys what could it be well being a leak expert when I look at planter beds like this and I look at water lines that are back to back I think this is the source right here but what we're gonna do is we're gonna remove this water heater and we're gonna figure out what that leak is once we open up that wall we'll start running a bunch of tests so we have a drain here so this water right here actually goes to this pump and then there's a discharge line, and I'm assuming it's got to be pumped out to the street. But I'm not seeing any water. There's one line there. There's another line there. I think it's going to come out there. What do you guys think? Do you think it's going to come out of there, or do you think it's going to come out of there? I think here. All right, now let's go out to the street and see where it's pumping out. All right, here we go. Yeah, that pump is awesome. All right, I think the water heater definitely getting a little bit lighter. A few more minutes and uh, we're gonna remove it. Disconnect the recirculating line. So the question that I have for the developers, why would you go with electric versus gas? Were you thinking the same thing? So this metal stand has bolts. So we're gonna go ahead and remove those. I always like metal stands. So much better than wood and drywall. Okay, so here's the mold. You can see that the uh, drywall is compromised right here. And so I'm gonna go ahead and run some water, guys, because I think this is where the suspect area is. So, I'm gonna let water run like this to the outside. And then uh, we'll start opening up the drywall and base molding and see in uh, probably, it may take 20, 30, 40 minutes, an hour for seepage. But um, we always like running water before opening up the materials. You can see that the soil is, is pretty saturated, so let's see if this is the cause. Some of you may be wondering, why don't you have a containment? Why don't you have an air scrubber? Well, when it comes to the garages with mold, it's an uncontrolled environment. We've got this big door, fresh outside air coming in, and more importantly, there's no contents in this garage, so we're good with that respect. How much does mold removal cost in a garage? Well, we get that question a lot. It really varies. It depends on if you're gonna remove a water heater. It depends on how bad the infestation is. It depends on how much content is inside the garage. All of that plays a huge role in the pricing. You know, it's gonna range anywhere between on the low side of 950, and we've done them on the high side of about $6,500. So again, it depends on the, um, the migration, the moisture levels, what caused it. All of those things play a massive factor. Jim, I think I found another source. Where, oh, where that cord is. See how they penetrated it? So let's go to the inside now and see if we're getting any water. Oh yeah, 
Oh yeah, right there. That little leak right there, guys, over time. Look at that right there. It's starting to spread on this corner a lot. So if we had a hard rain, a lot of wind, or the sprinklers in this planter bed over a long period of time sprays on there and gets into that area right there. Good find, Raul. Great, great job. So this is why the uh, this corner was impacted the most because the water was migrating and then a lot of it ending up in this corner here. So you can see the gardener came through here. So there's a gap in between the wall cavity there and the water cascades down and ends up here. So the proper exterior caulking or sealant is gonna be imperative all the way around this pipe and the, uh, the wire. So you can see how important it is to really identify the water sources. I mean, anybody can come in here and do a great job by remediating the mold, but finding the moisture source is the key to the success. And that's what I'm proud of is being able to do both. So that way the client's not having to call us two weeks or a month or a year later. I'm going to surprise the client. I'm going to go ahead since we're already here and clean out that sump pump pit. Look at the bottom of this thing. It is nasty. I love going out of our way for clients. When we see something like this, like this pit, we're already here going the extra mile and uh, adding that little special service for our clients. That's what it's about. It feels good at the end of the day. So we're adding a lot of water into the pump so we can get, uh, get a lot of the debris cleared out. So let's head out to the street now and see how much water comes out. Yeah, that's why I like Zoller. Zoller pumps are awesome. It's a little stinky. May need some of the enzyme in there that I may do. Uh, get rid of that odor, it's pretty bad. It's been sitting there for a long time. You could imagine if you went with the other guys and they would have just treated the mold, put everything back, you would have had this. And now that we're coming back with winter, guaranteed you would have had the mold come back. Oh my gosh, no, you're absolutely right. I wonder, so why did they install this? What is this? It's probably the, well, this is your control panel for your sprinkler uh, box, which is right there. Okay. I thought, to be quite honest with you, I thought you had a waterproofing issue originally. That's just based on my 32 years experience. I thought, uh-oh, I hope it's not a water intrusion from the outside. Because a lot of times with planter beds, over time, water seeps through the cinder block and uh -huh. then starts to intrude. But that's not the case here, which is huge because that's, that's a big cost for repairs. Oh, wow. So it's wow. just literally a just very that. simple caulking around there. Oh, amazing. Yep. Thank you. You're Great so job. welcome. I really appreciate it. You got it. Thank um, you. All right, we got to have a little fun here. I'm going to put a challenge to me, Raul, whoever wins the challenge is going to buy lunch today. Are we are we good with that? Okay. So I gave you a swab because we're on a mold job, mm -hmm. right? They're the same size. Mine just has a little sail on it. Here we go. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna set our swabs here. Go ahead and set yours in there like that. We'll make sure they're even, just like that. Now, Jimmy has the blue. Raul doesn't have any tape. We're gonna hit the discharge line and we're gonna see which swab ejects out the furthest. And whatever swab ejects out the furthest wins the lunch. Here we go. Okay, on your mark, get set, go. Oh. Let's see here. They just cleared a boat here. Let's see how far they go. And there's Raul, he's in the lead. Uh oh, the blue is ready. Oh! <laughs> Raul gets stuck. Mine's sailing away. Oh, look at Raul's. <laughs> He's got a little canoe or a kayak. Mine's a speedboat. Sorry, Raul. I want it, buddy. Okay, I'll take a um, sirloin steak. Okay. I'll have a salad, a glass of red wine. Is that cool? Okay, sounds good. Awesome. Good job, buddy. Okay, now that we've flushed everything out, we're going to go ahead and put our enzyme in. This will be kind of a, a good way to neutralize the odors as well. Smelling good now. I'm going to push some air with the air scrubber and dry this area out here while we go to lunch. That way, when the uh, Raul applies to get all this, scrape the rest of this off and then coat all of this really well with a, uh, with a good sealer. Even though I won the boat race, I can't get one of my guys to buy me lunch. So I'm going to go ahead and grab some lunch for him and surprise him with burger, a shake, and some fries. Let's go! Alright, we just got back, so I'm going to surprise him with lunch right now. How we doing, Raul? Getting dry, huh? Nice, okay. 
Um, even though I won the boat race, I got two your lights today. <laughs> Thank you. You're welcome. Enjoy. Yeah. All right, so we're going to get this uh, prepped here. We're going to get this clean. And I like using this right here because we're dealing with uh, the concrete finish here. This is going to do a good job by adhering to the existing concrete. We really want to inject it a lot in there too. Shove it way in there. All right, so I went really thick all the way around underneath. So that's all that it would have taken for that guy to, to acknowledge that. But just a lot of people just don't know. A small little penetration like that can cause damage over a long period of time. So that's sealed up. Now that'll really cure, especially on a day like this. I forgot to show you guys, but if you guys remember this stand here, I'm using a Rust-Oleum. It's an undercoating, so, because over time it, uh, it rusts out. So this will just be a, a little good coating between the water heater and the, and the stand. So we'll let that dry in the sun while we're doing the interior repair in the garage. All right, so uh, Raul's got the 20 minute compound. We're just kind of cleaning this up and then we're gonna add our, um, our Zinzer waterproofing. I like this stuff, where is it? We're gonna apply this uh, watertight ultra waterproofing paint. Really good for uh, cinder blocks. So we'll just add that as well. Yeah, I never recommend putting uh, sheetrock over cinder block. It just, for me, it's, it's, it's not worth it. All right, we've uh, pushed a lot of air for at least 45 minutes. We've got everything dry. We've got the uh, coated water heater stand. So now we're gonna reinstall the water heater. Got the water heater up there. All right, I've opened up the T&P. Gonna air it out, and then we'll, uh, we'll begin filling up and regenerate the uh, water heater and get them hot water. So far, so good. Getting our earthquake straps on. Here in California, we've got to have, this is a plumbing code, you've got to have two earthquake straps. So let me know in the comments, guys, if you have to, if, is this code in your state? We're gonna go inside the house now and make sure we got all the air out of the lines, guys. Anytime you turn the water back on. I came back in earlier and I turned everything on. There. You wanna make sure you get all the air out of the line. Get the electrical all set up. So the uh, tank is completely full guys. So we've got all that regenerated. We got the airlock uh, out of the entire system. So she should have hot water in about, I would say an hour to two hours, depends on the uh, heating element. Awesome Raul, good job buddy. Well, there you have it guys. Another successful job and most important, a happy, happy customer. Leave the comments down below. Love to hear what you'd have to say about this little journey and hit that subscribe button. That's a big help with YouTube guys. Can't stress enough. And we'll see you on the next one.